This is the screencast for Database Design CMS 476, Session 5. Tonight we'll be talking about normalization. And continue with a demonstration about modeling with Visio Modeler in order to create databases that are in a properly normalized form. I'm going to give you two methods of normalization in this first screencast. We'll talk about method one, then we'll break due to the limits that YouTube places on uh, upload size and we'll continue with method number two, the automated method. Here's our data set. It's the famous Daisy Hill Puppy Farm example. We have information that we want to track about puppies and their names, the kennel they come from, the kennel location, the tricks they know, where they learn their tricks, and what the skill level is at performing that trick. So here's method one, the old way. Basically three steps. You eliminate repeating groups, then you eliminate redundant data, and then you remove items not dependent on the primary key. That means getting rid of transitive dependencies. So eliminate repeating groups. You want to make a separate table for each set of related attributes and give each table a primary key. How do you do that? Well, we take our big grid that we were looking at a minute ago and break it down into a puppy table and a trick table because the tricks are repeated every time the puppy is repeated. So we've got the puppy's names, the kennel code, the kennel name, and the kennel location together with a unique identifier, a primary key called puppy number. For the trick table, we break out the trick name, where the trick was learned, and its skill level. Give that a trick ID, but reference it back to the puppy table by including the puppy number of any puppy that knows a particular trick. Now, the second step, we want to eliminate redundant data. If an attribute depends on only part of a multi-valued key, remove it into a separate table. How do you do that? Split, for example, the trick table into two. Tricks themselves and a table that we'll call puppy tricks because that's going to contain information about puppies and the tricks they know. So we've got a tricks table. It'll have the name of the trick, which is kind of self-descriptive, and a primary key, the trick ID. Puppy tricks is the link linking table that will hold things together. It will take the puppy's identification number and the trick ID that we just created and store that in a table where we also have where the trick was learned and the skill level for that particular combination of trick and puppy. Meanwhile, our puppy table remains the same. We have a puppy name, a puppy number, a kennel code, a kennel name, and a kennel location. Now then, the third step. Remove items not dependent on the key. If an attribute does not contribute to a description of the key, remove it to a separate table. In this case, if we look at the puppy table, it's got a bunch of kennel information. So we're going to split that into two tables. We've still got tricks and puppy tricks, but over in the puppy table, we're now going to have the puppy identification number, the puppy's name, and a thing called kennel code. The kennel code is a reference to the new kennels table, which is going to contain the kennel name and the kennel location, together with this kennel identification code, the primary key, the unique identifier that lets us identify kennels 
irrespective of their actual textual name. So, the result of that, four tables. Puppies that are linked to kennels. Puppy tricks that get their puppy ID, their puppy uh, number from the puppy table. And they get their trick ID from the tricks table. Four, four tables is the fully normalized third normal form version of our database. This is what you want to shoot for so that SQL can properly query the system and you're not carrying along a lot of redundant or duplicative information. We're going to pause here, come back with a second screencast showing you an automated way of doing this in Part B.